Welcome to Geometry! Good morning, guys and girls, 10th, 11th grade. I'm uh, glad you could join me this morning. Um, now, I hope everybody's wide awake. I hope everybody ate breakfast. I hope everybody's used the bathroom, brushed your teeth, and you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for our geometry class today. We have a special treat today. We have a special guest visitor who may appear at some point during our lesson. Uh, as a matter of fact, when you hear this alarm... Our special guest is going to show up, and our special guest is going to have a trivia question. That's right, a trivia question. The, the student, the first student that texts me the correct answer will win a special prize, all right? And so uh, you say, how am I going to get that, Pastor Dom? We're well, going to deliver it to your house, all right? So the first student to text me the correct answer will get a special treat. I hope everybody's okay. We're going to open up with the word of prayer. We're going to kind of review and get set for uh, our checkup. I know everybody took the checkup. Uh, those who have not taken the checkup yet, that needs to be sent to me as soon as possible. So uh, we'll, we'll wait to score that when, when everybody's quizzes come in. So if you had some trouble areas in your checkup, uh, just sit tight. We'll probably go over that once everyone's uh, completed their quiz and send that in and then we'll have that scored so uh, we'll do that all right today we're going to continue with the Pythagorean theorem uh, as well as two new theorems the 30 60 right triangle uh, theorem and the isosceles right uh, triangle theorem so uh, looking forward to having some fun with that we're going to pray and then we're going to get started uh, this evening Heavenly Father thank you for this morning give us wisdom give us alertness uh, as I explain these principles and the students sit there, I pray that they would do their work and work hard. And we'll give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so what we're going to do is, I, these were for the checkup, but we're going to wait till all the checkups are completed and done. So we're going to pick up on page number 17 in your textbook, page 17. Quickly, by way of review, yesterday we learned the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, does anyone remember the Pythagorean Theorem? How about we have Katie's just lucky? Good morning, Kate. How are you today? Uh, why don't you give me the Pythagorean Theorem? Good. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So this is very important. This is Theorem 94, which states the square of the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides. And, and so uh, we kind of did that yesterday. And uh, also we looked at Theorem, or, or page number 19, excuse me, page number 19, we had to do for homework. So I just want to do, go over a couple of the problems that you had for homework. We actually had to do the evens for homework. So uh, let's look at number two. Number two on page number 19. We're going to quickly go over that one here. And so we have a baseball diamond. Okay, we have a baseball diamond here. There's our pitcher's mound. All right, so first base, second base, third place, home plate. Now, here's the question. A... Uh, the distance from home plate to first base on a baseball diamond is 27.5 meters. 27.5 meters. How far must the catcher throw the ball in order to put a man out who is trying to steal second base? And so uh, from home plate here, we see how far will the catcher have to throw. So if you notice this area here, we have a... Right triangle form. Very good. So if I want to find the length of the sides of a triangle, we will use Pythagorean theorem. So we know that this is 27.5 meters. This is 27.5 meters because all the bases are equal distance apart. And so we're just going to plug and chuck and find. Now, if this is the right angle here, that makes this line the what, G? Ah, gotcha. Good. It is the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So we're going to go C squared equals 27.5 meters squared plus 27.5 meters squared. All right. So uh, we'll quickly do the math here. So C squared is equal to, all right, 756.25 plus 756.25. So C squared equals 1,512.5. Now, does anyone remember how do I eliminate the exponent in this equation? What do I have to do? How about we have Josh Baruch? All right, Josh, what do we do? got to do to get this rid of this exponent? 
Good, we have to find the square root of both sides of the equation. So C equals, and then just type in your calculator, what is the square root of 1,512.5? We'll wait for that, and this was done for homework. Hope everyone did it. Uh, what is the square root of 1,512.5? Uh, how about we have Gabe? What's the answer, Gabe? Follow up by Hannah. Excellent, so we have 38.8. Nine meters. That's how far the catcher will have to throw. Great job. Uh, let's do one more for you had to do for homework. Uh, number four. A uh, number four in on page number nineteen. All right, number four, which reads: A family in Steinbeck, Canada, drove twenty kilometers west and then thirty-five kilometers north to go shopping in Winnipeg. How far were they from home? Now, if you remember. All right, we have north, south, east, and west, okay? So the family, okay, they drove 20 kilometers west, okay? After they took, drove 20 kilometers west, then the problem stated that they went 35 kilometers north, okay? 35 kilometers north, okay? Now, here's the question. How far, <clears throat> excuse me, how far were they from home? How far were they from home? So, yeah, now, here's the actual distance that we want to figure out here. All right, so here's home, and here's the store. All right, what is the distance? How do we figure that out? All right, how about we have, um, uh, who do we got? Oh, Caleb. How are you doing, Caleb, this morning? Hope you're awake, Caleb. Um, what do you have there? All right, so we have... Pythagorean theorem, very good. We have, this is the right angle. This is the hypotenuse. So we would have C squared equals 35 squared plus 20 kilometers squared. All right. And what, what did you get for your answer? Page number 19, number four. You should have 40.2, 40 40.31, 40.31 kilometers is correct. It won't be a complete class if I didn't drop my textbook. Uh, again, but correct 40.31 kilometers is the e exact answer. Good job, everyone. There, uh, turn the page to page number 21. Page number 21. And so, uh, we have last night you had to do for homework, you had to do the evens again. This was the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. The converse of the Pythagorean theorem is just simply stating if. The, sum, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two legs. Then we have a right triangle, okay? Uh, that's the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And so quickly, just by uh, homework, we have to do our homework. Let's look at number four. All right, so number four, let's have Chris Robb. Uh, number four, what did you get for number four on page 21, all right? So we had uh, A equals 7, B equals 8, C equals 12. Uh, Chris, would you please uh, mind give me number 4? Is it yes or no? Good. How about we have Liam follow up? Good. The answer is no. That is not a right triangle. Uh, if you did the math, you'd have 144 equals does not equal 113. Good. Number 6. Number six, I want to kind of do this one uh, with everybody for number six. And so we have here, all right, so 16 squared. Does that equal 6 to the square root of 2 squared plus 6 to the square root of 2 squared? All right, so we know uh, 16 times 16 is 256. All right, now 6 to the square root of 2. Does anyone remember how we do this? Since we have an exponent out here, all right, we're, we're going to uh, raise 6, and so that's going to be 36, and we're going to remove the radical sign here, so 36 times 2, and we're going to do the same exact thing on this side. So 36 uh, times 2 would actually be, uh, how about we have um, Fausto? Ah, caught you snoozing, Fausto. All right, what's 36 times 2, Fausto? 36 times 2 is 72 plus 72, very good. Does 72 plus 72 equal 256, class? No, it does not, very good. So 256 does not equal 144. So right triangle, 
No, it's not a right triangle. Good. That is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so page number 22. Page number 22. Let's look at this one here, all right? Uh, page 22. Before we get into our new material, um, <clears throat> let's look at number one. How do we know that a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are 5 meters and 10 meters and whose diagonal is 5 to the square root of 5 meters is a rectangle? Now, it gives us a hint here. It says, hint, use theorem 34. All right, so we know a... What is theorem 34? Does anyone remember what theorem 34 states? We know we have a triangle here, right? Okay, we have a rectangle. So a rectangle we know has four right angles. Four right angles, all right? So uh, let's finish drawing the shape here. We have our diagonal. This is 10, this is 10, this is 5, this is 5, and this is 5 to the square root of 5. All right, how do we know that the quadrilateral whose opposite sides are 5 and 10 meters and whose diagonal is 5 to the square root of 5 is a rectangle, okay? So we know a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. The quadrilateral is a parallelogram because the opposite sides, this is theorem 34, it's been a long time, I know. This is one of our highlights. A rectangle is a, a parallelogram is a rectangle uh, because the opposite sides of a uh, parallelogram are congruent. They are congruent. Very good. And so the angles are right angles according to the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Let's prove that. Okay, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Let's see. All right, so we're going to go 5 to the square root of 5. Okay squared. All right, then we have 5 squared plus 10 squared. All right, so this is 25 times 5 is equal to 25 plus 100. All right, class, get your calculators out quickly. What's 25 times 5? 25 times 5 is 125. Good. 125. What's 25 plus 100? 125. It's the converse of Pythagorean theorem. So if this is a right angle, right, if the Pythagorean theorem works out, then this is a right triangle, and a right triangle has a right angle. So we know theorem 34, again, which states that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram because the opposite sides are congruent, and the angles are right angles. They're very good. Their angles are right angles. Okay, we're going to pick up on page 23. Page 23, okay, uh, everybody turn there. We're going to begin some new material right now. Special right triangles. A 30-60 triangle is a triangle whose angles measures 30, 60, and 90 degrees. Okay, 30, 60, and 90 degrees. Okay, so, all right, now, Look at theorem 96. This is very important because we're going to look at an isosceles right triangle in just a few moments. Remember, an isosceles right triangle is uh, the two angles are 45 and 45. And then we have the 90 degree. But we're going to look at special relationships exist between the lengths of the sides in a 30-60 right triangle and an isosceles right triangle. Okay? So theorem 96. <clears throat> if the acute angles of a right triangle have 30 and 60... Then the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shortest leg. If the acute angles of a right triangle are, have a measure of 30 and 60, that's very important, then, all right, what's the conclusion? The hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter leg. And the longer leg is the square root of three times the length of the shorter leg. So there's two character traits there that we have to understand. If we have a right triangle and we have a 30, 60, and 90, then we know the hypotenuse is two times the length of the shorter side, of the shorter leg, and longer, the longer leg is the square root of three times the length of the shorter leg. So basically it's going to look like this, all right? So we have, if this is A, this is B, this is C. Remember the hypotenuse. If I want to solve the hypotenuse, we know that it's two times, sorry, the shortest leg. 
two times the shortest leg, and the B, the longest leg, we know is the square root of three times the shortest leg. Highlight this. You're going to need to highlight this. You're going to see this on the bottom of page number 23 in your material. All right, so get ready to highlight that. That's very important for us uh, to know, okay? Now, let's, let's apply that to page number 24. So if I want to find the length of the hypotenuse, it's simply two times the shortest leg. And if I want to find the longest leg, we know it's the square root of three times the shortest leg. Look at, look at number three, would you, with me? All right, we have, okay, uh, A equals six, okay? A equals six, and we have B equals what, and C equals what? Now, we know the shortest leg is six. Now, based on the 30-60 right triangle, we know that uh, the shortest leg is six. So how do I find the hypotenuse class? M, what do you got? Good. Okay, so two times... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Let me hear you. Trivia question. Okay, here we go. All right. Everybody? What is our trivia question? Remember, the first student to text me the correct answer will get a special prize. All right? So it's got to be text, not email, not through the reminder app, but through text. Here we go. A little out of breath here. What do you call a triangle that has three unequal sides? Ooh. That's a good question. A That's a really good question. All right, so first student to give me that correct answer wins. Let's hear for uh, 10th, 11th grade. Ready? If you love Bethel, let, let me hear you now. B E T H E L. B E T H E L. Bethel. B E T H E L. Bethel. Bethel. She's so pumped up, everybody. Thank you, Melody. Thank you so much. All right, class, we're back to normal. All right, here we go. Uh, 30, 60, right triangle, and before we got rudely interrupted by our special guest, uh, how do I find the length of our hypotenuse? We have two times the shortest side. So the hypotenuse would be two times six, which would simply be... Ah, two times six is not 18. I caught you sleeping, didn't I? He's all, he's all like, yeah, it's 18. Ah, oh, you gotta pay attention. Two times six is 12. Come on now, everybody. Uh, let's wake up here. All right, Brandon. I'm glad to see that you've joined us this morning. Brandon, how do I find the length of side B? It is simply the shortest side times the square root of three. How do I write that? We just simply will go six to the square root of three. Now I want to show you something here, okay? If this is a right triangle, then if I apply the Pythagorean theorem to this, we are going to have a right triangle. It's going to equal out. So let's try it, okay? So we have 12 squared is equal to, all right, six squared plus six to the square root of three squared. Now let's watch this, okay? So 144 is equal to 12, all right, plus, is that 12? Ah, I got you again. Six squared is not 12. Oh, you got to pay attention. It is 36. Good. Now, how do I handle this? Exponent, parenthesis. Okay, we have a whole number, so that's going to be 12. Very good. This will be removed the radical sign. All right, so 144, does that equal 36 plus? What's 12 times 3? What's 12 times 3, class? Good. 12 times 3 is 36. Uh-oh. Something ain't right. It's something wrong here. Because if this truly is a right triangle, then the question, the problem would equal out. So let's quickly figure out what did we, did we do something wrong here? Did we do something wrong? All right, so if B is 6 to the square root of 3 and, and uh, C is 12, right? A is 6. Did I do something wrong here? I did. I'm telling you, you got to pay attention, guys. you got to pay attention, okay? So if this is, again, not 6 times 2, this is 36. 
I know this quarantine's getting to you guys are becoming sluggish. Come on now, help me out here. All right, give me a little help here. 36. 36 times 3 is what? 108. Very good. Now, notice 144 equals 144. So, this is, using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, this is a right triangle. So, the 30, 60 right triangle, okay? Let's do another one. Let's do another one. If you would, let's do number 5. Number 5. Okay, A equals 9. Then what is B equal and what is C equal? All right, how about we have uh, Preston. All right, Preston, it's your turn now. How do I find the length of the hypotenuse? What is it? It is simply 2 times A. So if A equals 9, which is the shortest side, so 2 times the shortest side. So 2 times 9 is 18. Very good. And how do I find the length of side B? Preston, let's follow, might as well uh, finish that up here. It's very good. It's simply A times the square root of 3. So what's A again? 9. So 9 to the square root of 3 is the correct answer. That's the 30-60 right triangle theorem. Real simple, all right? We'll do one more, and then you guys can uh, do the evens for homework. How about we do number number 7? All right, we have B is 5. What is A and what is C? We're not going to panic, okay, because C equals 2A and B equals A to the square root of 3. Now, how do I solve for the hypotenuse, right? We, well, it's 2 times A. Do we know what A is? I don't know what A is yet. I have to solve for A. So, before I could do that, let's go down here. We know what B is, so I'm just going to plug B in. So, B equals A to the square root of 3. How do I get A by itself? How do I get A by itself? Katie Barouche, uh, I've been waiting to get you, Kate. Stop looking on your brother's paper. Here we go, Kate. What do we have here? All right, I got to get A by itself. What do I got to do? Good, I got to... Divide both sides by the square root of 3. So we have A equals 5 to the square root of 3. Great. There's a problem with that. Does anyone see a problem with this fraction? How about we have um, Liam. How you doing, Liam, this morning? Why don't you follow up? What's wrong with this, this, uh, this ratio, this fraction? What's wrong with it? Anybody want to follow up? Anybody? Good. You can't have a radical sign in your denominator. This is, all right, so how do I get the radical sign out of my denominator? Here we go. We're going to simply multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. This is called rationalizing the denominator. And so we have, all right, 5 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. Now, what's the square root of 9? Bob, you don't What's up, Bob? Good to see you. Miss you, man. What's the square root of 9, Bob? 3. Good. 5 to the square root of 3 over 3. Good job there. All right, so now that's what A equals. So I'm going to put up here A equals 5 to the square root of 3 over 3. Now, how do I find C? It's 2 times that. So let's plug it in. So C equals 2 times 5 to the square root of 3 over 3. 5 to the square root of 3 over 3. Now, how do we, how do, we do this? <clears throat> let's just treat this like any other fraction here. All right, so let's go treat that over 1. Okay, so 2 times 5 is 10. Good. So 10 to the square root of 3 over 3. Can we reduce this fraction here? No, we cannot reduce that fraction. So our final answer for number 7, for letter C, it is 10 to the square root of 3 over 3. Any questions? 
If you have any questions, make sure you let me know. All right, maybe you can send, the, send me a text or email uh, asking for that. All right, let's turn the page here. We're going to finish with tonight's lesson. Uh, we're going to look at Theorem 97. So that was the 3060 right triangle theorem. Again, if you have a triangle that has a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle, we can still find the lengths of the sides. We find the length of the hypotenuse. It's two times the shortest side. And then we can find the length of the longest leg by... Uh, by going uh, B equals A, the shortest side, times the square root of 3. Now let's look at the isosceles right triangle theorem. Isosceles. Again, this is a highlight. This theorem, theorem 97, theorem 96, you want to highlight them. You want to note, understand what they're called. 30, 60 right triangle theorem and the isosceles right triangle theorem. Let's finish with this one here. Let's read theorem 97 together as a class. All right, here we go. In an isosceles right triangle, the hypotenuse, how do I find the length of the hypotenuse? It's the square root of 2 times the length of either leg. What do we know about an isosceles triangle? It has two congruent sides. Very good. So all we have to do is if I want to find the hypotenuse, all I'm going to do is just the square root of 2 times the length of either leg. So let's, let's practice that, okay? So I'm going to put here... How do I find the hypotenuse? C equals, all right, the square root of 2 times the length of either side. It could be A or that could be B. It's the same measurement, the same measurement. So, all right, okay, if we have, remember, okay, we're going to call this an isosceles right triangle. That's 45, that's 45, that is 90, okay? This is A, B, C. How do I find the length of the hypotenuse? I'm just going to simply plug the length of either side in and times that by the square root of 2. Let's do number 4, okay? You're going to do the odds on this page for homework, page 26. All right, so let's do number 4. If A equals 9, B equals 9, what is C? Real simple. It's the length of either side times the square root of 2. So all I'm going to do is go 9 to the square root of 2. That's it. That's simple. Real basic. Look at number 6. Okay, number 6. All right, we have, all right, we don't know what A is, we don't know what B is, but we do have the hypotenuse. So we can work in opposite fashion. So, I'm going to plug my known into my equation. So, 7 is equal to a to the square root of 2. All right? Obviously, I want to get a by itself. So, I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. a equals 7 to the square root of 2. Now, Dave Weber. How you doing, buddy? What are you drinking today? Anything good? Got like guava juice or something? Coconut? Some, all right. Drink some for me today when you get it when you get a chance. Uh, Dave, what's wrong with this fraction? How about Chris Rob? Follow up with me. Good. So you can't have a, can't have a radical sign in the denominator. So we want to rationalize that. We do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the square root of two. So we have seven to the square root of two over. 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So, there's your answer. 7 to the square root of 2 over 2. And since it's an isosceles right triangle, B is the same length. So, <clears throat> 7 to the square root of 2 over 2, and there's your length of either side. Any questions? Any questions? Again, so tonight for homework, make sure somebody owe me your quiz. That needs to be done uh, before tomorrow evening. That needs to be turned in. Also, you need to make sure that your homework is completed. Your handbooks are up to date. So quickly, by reiterating, uh, we did page 24. Page 24, you're going to do the evens. Page 26, you're going to do the evens as well. All right, I believe, I think that's all for tonight's class. Again, we'll, on Tuesday, we're going to go over the checkups. So if you have any questions, you got anything wrong, uh, we'll, we'll go over, discuss some of those problems, and then we'll go on continuing with the right triangle uh, theorem and also the 30-60 right triangle theorem as also as the isosceles right triangle theorem. All right, so I hope you have a good day. Great, safe weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday. Goodbye.